Welcome back to the channel. My name is Avon. Welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and Eastern Resurgence 2 with Stalwart Bucharest. Today we have a European playoff. I'm not going to show you what competition just yet. You're going to find out once we've got through everything that's been happening off camera. Uh, but yeah, today it's a European playoff and a chance to get through to a group stage. But which one? You'll find out a bit later. As always, if you're enjoying the series, drop a like down below and leave comments. They're the best ways to support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. We've got a lot to get through today. We've got transfers to go through. I played eight matches off camera, so it might be a bit of a long one today, but let's get through it. So we'll start by looking at what happened last time and we won our third straight Super Cup as we beat Vitorol 4-2 at the Arena Nazionale. And yeah, a third straight Super Cup. We've won three league titles. We've won three Romanian Cups. We're winning almost everything there is to win in Romania. So now we want a good show in Europe. Can we win ourselves a European trophy somewhere along the line this series? We're going to give it a shot. And in transfer news, we'll start with the departure of Patrick Boyangu, who has gone to Hungary to that side there that I can't say. Uh, he wasn't too bad. Just last season, he barely he played he didn't even start a single game last season got a cup a couple of goals previously two in the league one in the cup and um, yeah decided to move him on we got 1.3 million for him so we've almost doubled our money i'm quite happy with that and i thought you know i'm not going to use him very much so let's move him on we have reloaned Ruben Aranzo from Villarreal for another season, paying £10,500 a week to loan him. As I say, he had a good season last season. We got him again. We have signed another centre back though, so we have four good central defenders. We have Aranzo, we have Manalake, we have Basiste, we have good backups. We do have another one. And here he is. This is Arland Alili, an Albanian centre back who we've signed from Academic Clinch, only £1.4 million. So we basically re spent the Boyangu money, and he is the right fit centre back that I wanted. And he's got a 20, so that's good. He's extremely brave. He's very aggressive. His tackling's good. His marking's good. His heading's good. He's 6'4". He's got good jumping reach. His positioning's good. He's strong. I like the look of him, and so far, he's been good. This is Peter Alm, who is a German central midfielder we've got from Bayer Leverkusen. He's cost us £500,000. Again, a lot to like. His passing's not too bad. His technique's good. He's got good teamwork. He's got good balance. Some decent mentals in there. Composure's not too bad. Plenty of potential. He's just 19. Um, if he'd have been a bit younger, this would have been really good. But, you know, hopefully he can grow into a good player. This is Chechu Rodriguez, who is a left back, 17 years old, that we've signed from Atletico Levante. 17 years old, he's very brave, he's got good positioning, not bad defensive attributes, could do a bit better in the heading department, but it's marking and tackling. At 12 and 11 for 17, that's not too bad. He's cost us £900,000 for Levante, so it is a bit hefty, but we've got the money to spend um, to buy these younger players, so we've gone ahead and done it. I'm actually in, in the market at the moment. For a guy that plays in Spain, that's Sri Lankan, I've never seen a Sri Lankan player in FM before. If I do end up signing the Sri Lankan, I'll show him to you. But we have got a couple more players that have come in. This is Jacopo Poloni, who is an Italian midfielder that have signed from Atalanta. Spent last season on loan at Spal. It's £2.2 .2 million. Pounds. He's played one game so far from the bench. And he looks, okay, again, pretty good. I did want a slight, a, a better midfielder than this. But it was very hard to find one that we could, uh, you know, that we could afford that was good. But Poloni doesn't look too bad. His passing's good. His first touch is good. He's got good teamwork, very good work rate, good stamina. He looks good. I think we could have got better, but Poloni's, again, a good player to have maybe behind Nidalea and Martino. I think we've got three good midfielders there. And the last player we've brought in, you might recognise from a few live comms, this is Alexandru Evdokim, who is a uh, homegrown 25-year-old defender. can play at left-back or centre-back. We've signed him from Croyover for £1.7 million. Could rise to two with add-ons. He's been, you know, a prominent player for Croyover since 2023. And I bought him in just for a bit of cover and, again, to fill that homegrown quota. Um, he might play at left-back, he might play at centre-back. I'm not quite sure. But, um, yeah, a left-back, you know, we've got George on. We've got Evda Kim now. We've got Sergio Ngorin, who can play a bit further forward and can play in midfield as well. So, Ngorin might not even be employed as a left-back. He might play elsewhere. So, Evda Kim's a good sort of backup left-back, like Rikoviak's been as well. So those are the players we brought in. There is still time to maybe get some players in. The transfer window is still open, so we could get ourselves that Sri Lankan um, and maybe look for some other young players that we can bring in as well. We've still got money in the bank as well, so um, we'll see how that goes. But now I've got eight games from off camera to show you, so let's see what happened. Martina heads it forward to Pavelka. Here's Cosmin Din. And here's Claudio Negoiscu to Pavelka. 
gives it back to Nagoyski who strikes and scores Stowers first league goal of the campaign inside six minutes. It is 1-0 at home against Gloria Bazal. Here's Martina and Pavelka and goes, cuts insides and scores. 2-0, 17 minutes, Pavelka gets his first goal in the league and the Stowers looking strong at the moment. Let's see you on the free kick. Oh, it's in and Gloria have a goal back and it's a free header by Tenassier. And Stauer falling asleep there on the set piece. Gloria have a goal back. Here's Din. Martina. To Pavelka and a nice finish. And that is a third for Stauer and a second in the game for Pavelka. Just played half an hour. Stauer restored their two goal cushion. Here's Pavelka. Good ball out wide for Claudio Nagoyscu. And Pavelka's making the run here. And he's got the ball back and he's on the edge of the box and he's completed his hat-trick. 58 minutes, it's 4-1 Stauer. Pavelka scored three of those four goals. What a first game of the season he's had. Here's George Jon. Martina Tenedalea. Ball over the top. Fine surge and gore and good control and a good finish on the left foot. And that's a sixth goal in the game for Stauer Bucharest. What a win to kick off the league campaign. 6-1. Here's Nedalea. Plays it out for Zubalay. Looking for that cross, but just hasn't quite got the space to pull it off. And the delay it does, though. And Pavelka's got himself another goal. That's four in two in the league. And Stau will lead in this eternal derby. It's Gabriel Toma. That's a great cross. And it's fallen to Lukic. Oh, and it's off the bar. Very close to getting a second there. Here's Georgion. That's a great cross, but it's going to come back to him from the Nikic header. Goes again. And it's Nedalea. It's taken a block. And it's in by Nedalea. A rare goal for Rarish Nedalea. And Stal with an early away goal here in Sarajevo. It was 1 0. Corner with Pavelka. And Lukic on the end of it. That's a great header. And inside 15 minutes, Stal with two goals to the good here away against the Bosnians. Zubale takes it past the defender, Nagoyscu. Oh, and Pavelka's got lots of space and time to find the goal. He does so. And we are 3-0 up now after 40 minutes. What a first half this is. Manalo to Ivankovic. And the long ball's going to find Smajic here. And a chance for Sarajevo to get back into the game. And they do with a minute left in the first half. And Sarajevo finally showing some life in the match. Iranzo to Nedalea. Pavelka to Toma. Pavelka with it back again. Here is taking it past the defender and fires home for yet another goal. And 58th minute, it is 4-1 away for Stauer here. What a performance. Free kick with Pavelka. And it's Basis Day at the far post and it's a fifth. 75 minutes, 5-1. Stauer flying in this Champions League qualifying tie. Throw in here for Stauer. Zubele throws it to Din. Here's Nedalea. And Nigar close, but a good block by Vardovic. Free kick here, Andreev. And it's in, it's Diakonu, I think, and it's a surprise lead for Petrolor Pliesti, who lead the champions um, in the Stadion of Stauer. Din to Toma. Din gets it back, here's Pavelka. That's a great ball, Nagoyscu's there, and Nagoyscu with a fine finish, an equalising goal there for Stauer, 12 minutes on the clock. Here's Ngoran, chance for a cross maybe? Oh, and he's been brought down by Diakonu, the goal scorer. It's going to be a penalty for Stauer. Cosmin Din steps up to maybe give Stau the lead here. And it's a save by Pantea. Din denied. Pavelka's still got it here. And Diakonu has, has given away another penalty. It's going to be another penalty. Now, can Cosmin Din redeem himself after the first one was saved? He can. Much more power on that one. No doubt about that. And Stau do have a 2-1 lead. Here's Alili to Zubale. Cosmin Din to Martina. What a ball for Pavelka. And there's another goal. That's 3-1. Stauer looking home and dry for the three points now. And Pavelka with yet another goal. Free kick. Oh, and it's in by Basiste. And that's a fourth in stoppage time. Pantea does not deal with it. And Basiste gets his second goal of the season. Here's Andre Basiste. Back to Sergin Goran. Martina to Din. Pavelka to Nigar. Pavelka's got it back and gives Dauer an away goal and a 1-0 lead in Norway. 28th minute. It is 1-0. And Goran to Din. Here's Nedalea to Martina. And the ball over the top is a good one. And it's Nigar who gets his first goal of the season. Had a bit of a slow start as Katalin Nigar, but he scored here to double the lead on 38 minutes. Corner here with Nigoyscu on it. 
And was there a push in there? There was. There's been a penalty given. Well, Cosmo Din has just been substituted. So it is Ruben Aranzo who is going to take the penalty. Can he make it a third goal here? No, he can't. He's missed the target. Aranzo. Ball to Catalin Nigar. Here's Toma. And oh, what a one, two. And Nigar's got another goal. And that's 3 0. What a result against Rosenborg this is. 3 0 in Norway. And Stahl will look well on the way to a Champions League playoff. Free kick here. And it's Martina. Oh, the keeper's had a nightmare. And Martina scored to give Stauer a 1 0 lead on the half hour mark. Amoa to Ayildiz. And Tudorake through, and Tudorake equalises for Hermannstadt with five minutes gone in the first half. Tudorake's on through on goal. Here is he. Oh, and he's brought down by Aranzo. And there's going to be a penalty for Hermannstadt. And the hosts have a chance to go 2 1 up here. It's Sleminski. And the goalkeeper can't get to it. And it's 2 1 to Hermannstadt. Is in Goran. Stauer are running out of time to try and save something from this game and avoid their first defeat of the season. And Lukic has maybe just saved them that point in the 89th minute. Two goals to two. Zubale up to Negoescu. Negoescu running into the middle of the pitch. And here's Martina. And that's a nice tidy finish on the left foot. And Stauer lead 1 0 on the night of four on aggregate now with 57 minutes coming up on the clock. Here's Alili to Manalake. Nedalea to Din. Uh, attempted tackle by Tagzef and Lukic just got found away through. That's 2 0 and 5 on aggregate now. 61 minutes gone. Lukic gets a goal and Stawa are flying. Negoisku manages to hold on to the challenge of Tagzet. Here's Din and it's Martino with the second goal of the game. 76th minute. Stawa once again 3 0 up and they've dominated this tie against Rosenborg here. So if you weren't paying attention, that does mean that we're through to the Champions League playoff round. If we win that tie, we're in the Champions League group stages. We're going to be against some of the best teams in, in, in Europe, in the world. It's going to be a tough one. But today, we've got the first leg of that playoff. And you'll never guess who we're going to be facing. We have drawn Dinamo Zagreb, a side that have knocked us out of Europe before. A side that took Goran Erez away from us. And it's another Croatian side. Rijeka cost us a lot of problems last season and knocked us out of the Europa Conference League. Now we've got Dinamo Zagreb, not for the first time in Europe. And now they've got Goran Erez. We're up against Goran Erez. Assuming he plays, he's broken his toe and he's not quite fully recovered. So he might not play. But yeah, we are through to the Champions League playoffs against Dinamo Zagreb. And if we get through, we're through to the Champions League group stages. And the money that comes with that is going to see us hopefully bag a ton of cash and hopefully a huge transfer window coming up. Looking at the league table, we are currently unbeaten. We did drop points against Hermannstadt away from home, but we won our other three games, scoring 13 goals. So I'm happy with that. And pavelko has got eight goals in his many appearances so far. So he's having a phenomenal start to his season. But anyway, let's jump into the first leg then against Dinamo Zagreb. We'll find out if we're going to be up against our old goalkeeper, Goran Erez. And this will be a fun test to see exactly how we've improved since we faced them last. If we go back to, I think it was a couple of seasons ago. Here it is. So we faced them in the Champions League second qualifying round a couple of seasons ago. Uh, and no, we actually went through. I forgot. I thought we went out, but we actually went through. We lost 5-3 in the first leg and then won 5 nil. So we've actually beaten these guys before. I, for some reason, thought that we went out against them, but we didn't. It looks like we are going to be up against Goran Erez, who's recovered from his broken toe. Um, he hasn't played one game for them so far this season. Last season, he did well. 24 conceded in 29-10 clean sheets. Not a bad season for them. In our own team news, Ivanovic is currently out with a knee injury, so he's been missing for a couple of weeks and he's going to miss about two more. Uh, and Costanza, not quite fit yet. He's still recovering, so he's going to be out today. And George John, fit enough to make the bench after being missing for um, the start of the season. So this is the side that's going to play in the first leg against the Nemozar group. It's Yonica, Ngoran, Manalake, Alili, who's had a great start. Uh, Zubale, Martina, Nedelea, Din, Pavelka, Negoiscu and Lukic. We're going to put Poloni onto the bench to replace Klapar. Uh, he hasn't featured yet, but may well do. I'm actually going to replace Manalaka with Basiste as well. I like Basiste. Manalaka is the captain, but I don't think he's going to see as much football as he has been. I'll put him on the bench, though. I'm going to put Botta on the bench as well, in place of Mahaxi. So we are up against Goran Erez, up against our role goalkeeper. Let's see how this goes. You know, we've beaten them before. Hopefully we can do so again. But our luck against Croatian sides recently has not been good. 
This is worrying because 30 seconds and they're actually on the attack. This could be a very early goal and an early away goal at that. And it's a good save in the end by Edouard Yonica. That had me worried. If they'd have scored inside a minute, that would not have been good. We are starting this on balance just so we can see the game unfold. That's what we did against Rosenborg. I wasn't sure how it would go. So I started on balance. But when I saw that we were actually you know, doing a lot better than I thought. We did bump it up to positive. I'm surprised that we won that 6-0 on aggregate as Luke scores his sixth of the season to give us a 1-0 lead with six minutes gone. Great start. <laughs> a bit worried with the Dinamo attack in a minute, but we've managed to get the first goal. So let's see how this unfolded. And I wasn't really paying attention because I was talking about um, Rosenborg. It's just a straight ball through from Cosmin Din and a great finish. 1-0. You know, I was amazed that we won 6-0 on aggregate against Rosenborg. I thought that would be a lot tougher, but what do I know? We win this tie. We're in the Champions League group stages, and it's a 2-0 lead now. Lukic scores again. Took a slight glance off of uh, Negoiscu's effort, I think, as deflection. But he's going to claim the goal, and we're 2-0 up inside nine minutes. It was Negoiscu. Um, Yeah, I think Negoiscu might have been just going wide, so Lukic will claim that. Okay, I have gone to positive. We are 2-0 up. We're looking up top, so hopefully we can hold on. Here's Nedelea to Pavelka. And is that going to be an early hat-trick for Lukic? It almost was, but Erez is down to save it. That was a chance for a 10-minute hat-trick there for Lukic. That was almost a 4-minute hat-trick for Lukic here. That's like Robbie Fowler-esque. That's Sadio Mane-esque. Okay, half-time. We are well on top. It's 2-0. Dinamo have had shots, but haven't really had a big chance yet, apart from that one they had in the first minute. Okay, 65 minutes. Ngoran has been quieter than usual and we want to get some fitness back for Georgie on. So we are going to make that change at left back. We'd like to get one more goal in here just to be safe. Two nils good, but three nils even better. We might get it though. We'll see. Alili wins the header. His Basiste to Nedelea. His Cosmin Din. He's got it back. And Lukic. Now, now he gets the hat trick. There we go. 77 minutes. And Philip Lukic gets the third goal and his hat trick. To give us a 3-0 lead at home against Dinamo Zagreb. A great place to be in before we get into the uh, the second leg. Uh, and that should be that should be nice and easy now. I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to see us through to the group stages of the Champions League. That's insane. I didn't think we'd get to the Champions League groups this season. I really didn't. But we've been really good. So we're going to make our last two changes. Let's give uh, Poloni a debut. And let's uh, bring Botta on for Negoescu. Orchestrates through here for Dinamo Zagreb. Great save by Yonica. Uh, he's perfectly good as a backup. He's perfectly good as a backup. He's three stars. He's very, very trustworthy. Um, we've cleared that. Poloni cleared it. Didn't really have much to do on his debut, but that was good. And that's full time. It's a 3-0 lead after the first leg. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. So we have a very healthy 3-0 lead to take to Zagreb and hopefully we can hold on to that uh, and hopefully not do too badly away from home. Maybe we can avoid defeat in Croatia. We'll have to wait and see. But that should see us in the draw for the Champions League group stages. I'm very looking forward to that. We could be facing some very, very, very good teams and that would see that balance jump right up as well. The money involved in the Champions League groups is going to be like a windfall for this club. We're going to have so much money by the end of that and it's I'm looking forward to next season already because our transfer budget, if we get through to the groups, is going to be unbelievable. Let's just see how the other sides um, in Europe are doing. So Vitarol are in the Europa Conference League. How are they doing? Uh, they lost to Legia uh, in the... Is that the third qualifying round or the second round? So they went out to Legia, unfortunately. CFR Cluj are out of Europe. They lost to AA Ghent, so they lost in the second qualifying round as well. And Sepsi, uh, they did get through their second qualifying round beating Lana from Ireland, but then they lost to Midland. So we are the last remaining side in Europe for Romania. So again, the work falls down to us to try and jump us up those coefficient ranks. But next time, we've got the second leg against Dinamo Zagreb. Hopefully we can hold on and avoid defeat in Zagreb. And then after that, we'll have the Champions League group stages. And I think we'll make that a bonus video as well. I think we'll put that out on Monday because I haven't got much work to do off camera and again i want to try and get through the season a bit quicker so i think doing an extra video for monday with that second leg i think that'd be a good idea but anyway that's going to do it for today's video thank you for watching it might have been a long one today because we had a bunch of stuff to go through matters off camera transfers yeah we had a lot to get through so it might be a bit long today if it is I'm sorry but if you did enjoy it drop a like down below and leave comments they're the best ways to support the channel and if you haven't done so already or if you're new then do subscribe and turn on notifications and next time we'll face dinamo again we'll face goran again 
and we'll have uh, hopefully a draw for the Champions League groups if we can uh, hold on to that 3-0 lead. If not, we mess it up, we bottle it, then we'll have a Europa League draw instead. Either way, you're getting a draw next episode. But for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.